Hi there, so it's about one o'clock in the afternoon on February 12th in Manitoba. And this is a video to add to the discussion on solar panels. So here's four solar panels connected in series. Here are 300 watt panels. I'll show you the uh, specs for them after. And I got them running on a hundred feet of solar cable, 10 gauge solar cable going into the shop. Cherry. So what this power is doing is coming down here to element number two, so it's direct current into here, into this uh, hot water tank, which of course uh, is pumped through the floor. My old system, it's normally like element one is always on the grid, it works fairly well. Talk about that more later. Okay, so here we are. The uh, solar panels are coming in here to this switch and the switch is on. So with the switch on, it's a load that's, that's running, right? That element. So if we take this clamp meter, turn it to six, the 600 position. On this particular clamp meter, now we're gonna change it to DC. We'll just hold it so you can see the screen a little better. Turns the lights on. So this is our DC, it's measuring DC amp. I don't know why it's showing it. something anyways. I'm gonna put it on there. So I'm getting about 9.4 amps. So 9.4 amps, right? Is, well, it varies. So they're connected in series, so your amperage is going to be changing based on the power of the sun. So that's to give you an idea of what four of those panels will produce at any point in time, and this being the strongest point of time. Now, four panels, some of you guys are already know what I'm going to get here. First of all, put this regular digital meter, you know that what I'm going to get here when I go positive and is basically nothing. Well, I'm surprised at even saying that because anything. Anyways, I turn it off and you get the, the voltage that you would expect from the combination of all the panels. So 161 volts from having the four panels in series. That'll always be the same, whether you're producing one amp or, you know what I mean? One amp or, or in, in theory, we I think we get up to 13 amps. If the sun was strong enough. When I turn it on, it's still measuring some voltage, even though it's drawn out, eh? It's kind of cool. That's funny that it's doing it now. I guess we got enough sun now that it actually, even though it's drawing it through a load, that, that element, it's we're still seeing some voltage, cool. So that's uh, like a, your basic standard uh, element about 3,500 watt. So what happens is, when you'll see on the chart, I'll show you, you're matching the resistance of the elements in there. You're not matching the voltage. So 163 volts times nine amps, or 13 in per theory, what we should get to would be that if you use the resistance formula or even the table, it'll match up with this pretty well the same as 110 power 
you know, or one, a 110 element at a higher amperage. Because it's on like a, I don't know how many amps go through there, but anyways, you're trying to match up the resistance between 163 volts and lower amps and 110 volts at higher amps. Get the resistance the same based on the formula and it should run the element. And what I've found is it does run the element, but not very good because we just don't have enough power yet. And this is the whole point of all this. If you think you're gonna use solar panels in Manitoba, Canada to heat something, uh, you're in for some unpleasant surprises. Yeah, this is my point here. If you think you're going to use solar panels to heat your shop in Manitoba, you're not going to have much fun because you need a hell of a lot of panels. In fact, you'd probably be looking at buying a whole pallet of them, which is 31 panels, and that's going to run you anywhere from six to $10,000. So you're certainly not uh, saving any money. I mean, you might as well pay for the electricity at our rates, right? Which is about 11 cents a kilowatt. But it is kind of fun. So if you're into it for the fun, it makes sense. Now, here's some of the problems that you're going to have. Uh, this is all fine right now. But if you get a really heavy snowfall and it covers the whole thing up, you got to be able to access it. That's one thing. Um... And then how do you clear it off? You can use a brush if you if you can access it. But most of the time, you're going to want to put it up out of the way of the trees and something way up there. So it becomes really dangerous and difficult to access, right? So you think to yourself, well, somebody by, by now must have made some kind of automated system. Well, not really. There are physical, um, like movement things like arms that will brush off but they're only really done in industrial settings where where you got big dollars going in um so i was thinking maybe you could do something with pneumatics you know have a little air blaster because the fact is if you could get even part of the panel to clear off after a snow the rest of the panel will melt everything off like in most places until you get way up north like here in most places, the snow will melt off pretty quickly. But up here where it's really, really freaking cold, it won't melt off. Now, one thing that you should know on that, I would think, and, and comment on this if you guys like it. If you're not drawing a load, then any part of the panel that's open will be producing heat. The panel produces, the panel, if there's no load on the panels, then it dissipates the electricity through heat. So I'd imagine that if there was no load on this panel, I might actually feel that it's warmer. It feels kind of warm now, but it's actually, it's connected to that DC element and it's turned on. I should check, I should test that actually. I'll test that for you guys. I could do it right now. Turn the load off and see if the panels change in warmth significantly. Because I would think that if, if there's no load on it, you know, then the panels will melt, but it has to have at least one little section that doesn't have snow on it that'll create that heat and then pull the rest off. So again, uh, to go back, you, you could come up with a system with pneumatics and I was thinking of doing this and have like a tire blaster and it would like blow the air off just to get a section free, you know, so that the rest would melt off by itself. But then I was thinking, okay, well, the complications of that, the valves and whatnot. Um, and yes, you can automate valves, but it starts getting pretty expensive and complicated uh, as you get into designing it. Because I always design things virtually, and then if it makes sense, I'll finish the project. What would be maybe better than going with pneumatics would be like a car spray system, like on your windshield. So what's much simpler and cheaper is to just buy some little sprayers that would spray um, 
car windshield antifreeze or some other non-freezing alcohol or something and it would just spray a little bit after the snowfall to melt part of the panels so that again like i've got a whole i've got 14 panels in my cottage that are very similar to this and right now they have about eight inches of snow on them and they are out of commission until spring or until we get two or three days where we get at least some part of the panel open because they will never heat up. So that's kind of uh, where I was thinking, like if I could have, it would be easy to have uh, a DC sprayer coming up like a car thing. And so I might try that because again, you're talking about panels that are installed on a roof two stories up and you don't, otherwise you got to create like a ladder system or some kind of secure system you know like you want to build these things so that when you're 80 years old you can just flip a switch you don't want to be crawling around on slippery steel roof uh in the middle of february right so there's if somebody would like to comment on and talk about what works for them and what they've tried out uh but this should be some helpful information anyways so let's i can see that i'll go do this other experiment okay it's a few minutes later so that's it we got minus six eh? a couple of minus eight minus 12 why all right. I just wanted to mention as well that this is not connected to MPPT. So it, you might get very different results, which we could test later. Uh, maybe you'll have like an MPPT in the, into it, see what kind of voltage you're getting. Um, again, they're all in series. So you're comparing DC 163 volts at nine amps to AC 110 for the other element, AC 110 um, at however many amps that thing draws. So it's two different animals, right? So you, but you, ha you have to take those two and use the algorithm to figure out the resistance. If you get the resistance matched properly, then the element will produce heat. Is it producing much heat? I think it's producing some but I think I'd need to really get up to 13 amps coming through here for it to really produce a decent amount. I think it's producing about half of what the, the AC element is producing when the power is coming in. So we will see. I don't want to get too far off topic here, but um, when you're doing your BTU calculations for heating your shop, um, if you can get one of these hot water elements it's just the top one that runs to run say for about 12 hours out of 24 it should pretty well heat this 1500 square foot shop um at uh like with a 20 foot ceilings they're like r12 or, or sorry r20 walls with uh, about maybe r60 roof uh, fairly well insulated and it It'll keep it above zero here in Manitoba, but it won't do much better than that. So you're gonna need some kind of alternative heat to add in. Now, again, getting even further off topic, if you try to do some kind of like waste oil heat like I did, it's a waste of time um, unless you put it outside and use a heat exchanger to bring the heat in. Because this thing will just stink. I, I've looked at a number of different videos about it and uh it's kind of a waste of time because it just no matter how you try to get it to run how clean it's still you know you need the real thing right which is expensive so that's another experiment again if you want to heat the whole shop uh, decently with solar you're going to need like minimum 30 panels and even that it, you know it's going to be it's going to be completely useless from November through till about February. Because 
we had basically no sun with climate change now and the stormy weather all the time and it's it was cloudy for the entire month of october the entire month of november the entire month of december with maybe four or five days of sunshine in here in sunny manitoba in those months which means you produce very little power even with bifacials and all the you know the best technology it, it won't do anything in terms of producing enough power for heat maybe with 30 panels you might but you're gonna have to put it through the battery through mppt and you know which is how you have to do it anyways right like we were just doing a real cheap experiment here to go series no mppt straight to an element we were just trying to do things as cheap as super cheap possible which you can do but it won't do nothing until probably you know like i was saying you're gonna be maybe at uh, late february before it even halfway works so let's try again so i've had the element turned off so there's no load on the panels for maybe 10 minutes let's see if we can see any difference hey it's going up that is cool 14 that's a higher number 12 these are all higher numbers so if you could see this the tan's a little lower that's one two yeah, that's not so great over here more seven maybe it's just because i took it out of my pocket 13 15 up there Not the greatest experiment, eh? 13. I think it's going up. Again, it should be, right? Um, I've turned the load off, so the power is not going to the element, it's going to the panels. And I'm, I'm seeing a bit of an increase in the warmth of the panels, and I can even kind of feel it a bit. Well, I can feel, feel it before, but now I'm feeling it a little more. So again, I guess what you could do, like in order, going back to the whole discussion of snow removal, if you got a small section to come open and then automatically also turn the power off, right, then, then um, it would probably melt off in just about any situation, no matter how cold. So you'd want a system that... Uh, Again, like I like the idea of the squirter. The only thing about a squirting idea is that there could be like a residue left on your panels. You know, uh, maybe maybe a windshield washer fluid is not the best. Because can imagine you squirt on your windshield, but then you never use your wiper. That would be what, what would be going on here. The other option would be to use some kind of linear activated uh, swiping mechanism. You know, uh, the same the same. Uh, thing that you use for a uh, tracking system to instead just wipe the snow off of a small area, you know? Uh, that would be maybe another way to do it. So in my cottage situation where I'm, uh, it's remote and, and I can't access it, like with, the reason I made these on this is so that I could play with it and it's nice, nice close to the ground. Obviously, the angle's not perfect, but that's because I was trying to replicate the cottage angle on the roof, more or less. In fact, it's steeper than the cottage, but, you know. So that's what's going on, different experiments. And, uh, yeah, because there's just not a lot of information out there on this that's practical and that's, uh, that's really northern like this. Thanks.